Good morning on this first day of January 1998 from the Big House in Ann Arbor. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Hofeld. You know, the author George Eliot once remarked, character is destiny. And that's why we're here today. Think about it, five months ago, who in the world would have imagined that the U of M on this day would not only be undefeated, but on the threshold of a national championship? Back in August, the national media was shrugging off the maize and blue. Preseason polls put them as low as 18th in the country. They were facing one of the toughest schedules in college football. But as Napoleon once said about war, three quarters of the battle turns on personal character. And with Coach Lloyd Carr leading the charge, the Wolverines would go on to stun the nation, proving the general correct and the pundits dead wrong. Right here, right now, we're going to have all the great plays, the highlights, the memories. We're going to have some fun. Jim Brandstatter and Jamie Morris, two former U of M stars now in the broadcast booth, will join us with their thoughts, their memories, their analysis. So really, over the next hour, we're going to take you on quite a ride on the road to the roses. So sit back, think back, and enjoy. This is the dream season. This kind of moment has to have deep roots. And it does. 117 years of growth. 764 wins. Most by any Division 1A team. This is Michigan. Kicking off the season a rematch with top-ranked Colorado. Who can forget their last two games? He's got three people down there. The ball's up in the air. Yeah. Just incomplete. It was almost picked off down there. It was time for another showdown. Uh, our kids love going into uh, hostile environments and, and uh, playing well. We're playing at Michigan Stadium, and uh, that's an advantage for us, and that's enough. We're the we're the bad guy, and and but as long as we stick together, we can have a lot of fun in being the bad guy at this particular moment. But if the Buffaloes had any fun, it didn't last long. Early in the first quarter. And he gets it away big. He's got Woodson over there. Coverage is intercepted. They challenged Charles Woodson. He put too much air under the ball, and Woodson intercepted it. And that early interception by Woodson really set the tone for the defense. And at that point, uh, I think everybody said, all right, Charles is back. Quickly, Brian Greasy took charge. He's got a man, Truman, wide open, the tight end. And Truman is rumbling down the sideline to about the two. Touchdown. As Michigan rolled, Colorado crumbled. They are relentless. And I think it was the defense that made everybody sit up and take notice. It grabbed everybody by surprise. They just blitzed and hounded. Nobody expected that type of defense that came out to play. When I get up, I don't know if I'm truly awake or if I'm still dreaming. All of a sudden everybody went, gee, this defense is pretty good. Jim Herman's really aggressive. We got guys that can run. Intercepted by the Michigan Wolverines, number 41, Tommy Hendricks. You have to have the strong defense, because their offense was young up front particularly, and with a brand new quarterback in Brian Greasy. What he brought, he showed, whatever the defense gives me, I'm going to take advantage of. Opening the third quarter, Michigan marched 89 yards in 11 plays before Greasy looked to the end zone. It was now 17 to nothing. Now the Buffaloes hope they have things sorted out. As this pass intercepted by Copenhaver. Out of bounds at the 15 yard line. Michigan fans were riding high. The Wolverines were knocking again. Third down now and goal. Here's Greasy Luckman getting some pressure. His pass is a touchdown. Russell Shaw. 
There were no Hail Marys this year. Managing only a field goal, the mighty Buffaloes had been humbled. Well, it's uh, not a uh, difficult uh, summary of the ball game. We got our tails whipped. We had a hard time picking up the blitz, so it just turned into a nightmare for us. You know, we couldn't do much all day long. We just got after those guys, and, uh, and we just killed their wheel. And uh, as the game went on, there was nothing they could do. And we just stayed on them. We kept after them, kept after them, and kicked them while they were down. And uh, today, I had to rate that, that defense A+. The national media agreed with Charles Woodson, and suddenly Michigan jumped to number eight in the nation. Still, there were people out there wondering, was this all a fluke? Were these guys really that good? Well, when we come back, a true test from a team the U of M fans love to hate, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. And, oh yes, there's a speed bump along the way by the name of Baylor. Back in a moment. Good afternoon, and welcome to the University of Michigan football stadium. I think in the Baylor game, you came in and thought, well, was the defense that good? Everybody expected a letdown. Could Michigan come out and play with the same intensity that they played with the game before? The Wolverines had been here before and dropped the ball. We know what happened in the past, and we know how uh, we came out flat against teams that we were supposed to beat, but this year we have a new attitude. I mean, we're playing every game like it's the last game that we're going to play. Well, they don't want to see this man, but they knew they would. Charles Woodson coming out wide right. On second down, they slam him in. Woodson leaping touchdown. First and 15 as we begin the second quarter. Charles Wilson with a touchdown and a takedown already today. As Woodson and the defense put on a dazzling display, Michigan's offense blitzed Baylor. Howard three straight through the middle. Will high step it in. Offensively, all of a sudden, they came around and started to dominate at the line of scrimmage. And I think more than anything, that was, uh, well, hey, the offense is coming around now. Hey, this could get good. Anthony Thomas, we call him the A-Train. Highlight of the Michigan attack was four freshman running backs, including Anthony Thomas, who rushed for 122 yards. There were visions of roses in the 38-3 victory, but first things first. I'm thinking about Notre Dame now. Once the game's over with, then that's when you think about the other opponent. I mean, one of the reasons you come to Michigan is, is to play in all the great rivalries, um, and one of those is Notre Dame. You're talking about tradition, you're talking about rivalry, you're talking about two teams that, that have everything at stake. Notre Dame had lost their first two games of the season. Uh, they're going to come in here and uh, uh, play their best game of the season. I don't have no doubt about that. With Michigan having two very impressive wins and Notre Dame on the mat with their backs to the wall, you just knew they were going to come in and fight. The question and the, the real test of our defense and our team uh, begins now. Uh, we're, just, uh, we're just finishing the exhibition season. You know, we're getting into it now. Here come the Wolverines. From the start, it was clear. Michigan had their hands full. Here's the ball coming deep. It's caught. At the 22-yard line by Malcolm Johnson. They learned from the game field. They came out and they did some things. They, they went after our one-on-one -on -one corners. They took advantage of, they picked up all the blitzes. Wallace is back, looking into the end zone to the corner. Touchdown, Brown. On their second possession, Notre Dame draws first blood. But Michigan storms back, marching 66 yards in 12 plays. This is Williams. Clarence Williams' grandmother could have scored that one. Notre Dame answers by digging in on defense. The Irish had good coverage. They were not allowing us to run the ball. They weren't allowing us to do the things that we wanted to do. They were trying to take us out of a game plan, and it, was, it, it worked to perfection. Closing the first half with a 98-yard drive and a touchdown in the final seconds, Coach Davies' crew was in command. So now all the questions are coming back. Well, Notre Dame's playing their best game of the season. Maybe Notre Dame 
is going to be the team that bursts the bubble. The best second half team is Michigan. And the biggest thing is they came out and Michigan was not afraid to throw the ball. That set the tone right there. The crowd is back in the ball game. A revived Michigan offense struck again on their next possession. Lord. He's got a touchdown. Suddenly, it looked as if the sun was setting on the Fighting Irish. Their offense began to sputter. And it is not going to work. Marcus Ray makes the play on Arthur Denson. I mean, he had him right on the number. Michigan was in charge. Or were they? And Greasy rolls it out. On second down and eight. Steps away. Now throws. And oh, good catch by Aaron Shea. Bumble. Turned the ball over to Notre Dame. So let's see if the Irish now can stem the tide and make the river run uphill. You want to talk about moments during a game and during a season that defines a team. Dodging a bullet in the end zone, it was Michigan's turn again. It's Russell Shaw dropping the football. And it is Notre Dame. Michigan gives it right back to him. But they were denied by Michigan's defense and punted away. And out of the shotgun. And a fight for it. The handoff got away. And Notre Dame's got the football. Michigan is giving Notre Dame every opportunity to score here. This defense went out there and says, you will not score. We will not allow you to score. Notre Dame, a fourth down and two. Denson. He did not make it. That was probably the biggest moment of that game and probably the biggest moment of that early season. I mean, it defined what was going to be a a defensive struggle. What was the defense was going to lead this team? It's an opportunity for us to go out and make a statement whenever we stop someone or hold them to a field goal or no points whenever our offense turns the ball over. They came out, they played hard, they put points on the board against our defense, and you know they we knew they were going to come out that way. But like I say, you know, you look at the scoreboard, we're on top. You know, Coach Carr used Mount Everest as a sort of metaphor for Michigan season. The Wolverines had to make it to the summit. And even though they were number six in the nation now, they were far from the top. When we come back, the U of M tackles the toughest conference in the nation. Back in a moment. Uh, you got to go away from home. Memorial Stadium, Bloomington, Indiana. Today, the undefeated sixth-ranked Michigan Wolverines take on the young Indiana Hoosiers. What's expected of Indiana? Indiana's going to give you everything they got. Calling the shots at Indiana, former Michigan assistant Cam Cameron, an old friend of Lloyd Carr. He's run all kinds of uh, the gimmick plays, the uh, reverses, the fake reverses, the reverse pass, uh, the flea flicker where the back tosses the ball back to the quarterback. But the Wolverines would not be fooled. Rodgers under pressure. Rodgers wrapped up and sacked back near the 10-yard line. Joaquin Fazell. As the Michigan defense kept its cool, the offense caught fire. In the second quarter, they just took the game and basically won it right then. Indiana fans, including rocker John Mellencamp, watched in disbelief. Well, here's Howard running short side, turns the corner and fights off a tackler and he's in for the touchdown! Indiana jumps up front, flags down, free play for Greasy, he fires, it's caught by Streets, turns it upfield at the 10, he's into the end zone, touchdown Michigan! Anthony Thomas, the only setback, gets the handoff to a big hole on the left side. Down to the 10, the 5, great downfield block by Marcus Knight, and he's into the end zone for a Michigan touchdown. 23 to nothing, Wolverine. On offense, the Hoosiers were simply helpless. They gave new meaning to the term ground game, and their passing attack wasn't much better. Rodgers to his goal line. 
Intercepted by Woodson. Charles Woodson with the interception of the nine-yard line. See you later, Hoosiers. It's over at that point. Handoff. McCall right side. And uh, he turns it upfield and gets down to the goal line and in for the touchdown. And Patrick McCall gets the Wolverines on the board again. The Indiana game was one of those games where you, you knew that once that second quarter was over, the game was over because Indiana couldn't play with Michigan. In the end, it was a shutout. Michigan 37, Indiana nothing. One big loss for Michigan. Senior co-captain Eric Mays suffered a season-ending knee injury. Many wondered if the defense could survive without him. They'd find out next Saturday back in Ann Arbor. Coming off a game that looked like child's play, the Wolverines knew they couldn't toy with their next opponent. I think everyone's aware of what uh, has happened. They've been 5-0 and going into the Northwestern game for the past two years. And that game right there, they lose that game and their season falls apart. 1995, the last time Northwestern was in Ann Arbor, Gary Barnett's troop beat the Wolverines for the first time in 36 years. And last year in Evanston, the scrappy Wildcats came back to beat Michigan with a fourth quarter field goal. Defensively, a year ago, we, did, we just uh, fell apart. We've got to finish one of these games. Northwestern came out strong, but Michigan wouldn't budge. And Hughes again, buried by Williams. He's got back-to-back -back sets. They threw everything they had out in the first two series, and the defense was not going to bend. Neither were the special teams. He comes up to the left hash mark, finds a seam over the 20, his hit fumbles the ball, and Feely dives on it at the 20, at the 36-yard uh, line for Michigan. Another Michigan field goal put them up 6-3, to three, but the team was struggling. Northwestern was better than a lot of people thought. They're very physical. And Michigan had problems moving the ball with penalties. Someone had to step up. This is the game, if there was a game, this is the game where Brian Greasy stood tall. When they needed plays in this game, Brian Greasy made plays. Here we go, third and nine from the 10. Three wideouts, Greasy to throw. Looking down the middle, guns it to Tubin. Touchdown, Michigan! The touchdown capped a 90-yard drive, but Greasy's best was yet to come. The biggest one was they're up 13-6, and a blitz comes, and a guy is wide open, he's gonna kill Greasy. He spins out of the arms of a man, throws in the end zone, touchdown, Michigan! That game right there, he came of age as a leader on this team. They came down to the fourth quarter, each guy remembered what happened the last two years, and uh, they put it in the back of their mind and said, all right, it's time to go out and get the job done. This year, no fourth quarter rally. Sir Charles would have none of that. And it is intercepted by Charles Woodson. And he steps out of bounds around the 30. Final score, Michigan 23, Northwestern 6. Uh, we uh, struggled out there a little bit today, but like I said, once we got back to our game plan, got calmed down, got comfortable out there, uh, we played our type of football. Now 5-0, and oh, the Wolverines were riding high, and everybody in the Big Ten wanted to knock them off their pedestal. Coming up, the big test, the battle for the bragging rights as the U of M takes on Iowa and another team by the name of the Spartans. Back in a moment. Iowa. Now that game, now that was a game. <laughs> if there was, you know, again, if there's one game in the year that tested everything, uh, it was uh, Iowa. I, I think the best game all year. Iowa lost the previous week to Ohio State. They did not play Penn State and Michigan State. So if they beat Michigan, they run the table. They got a shot at winning the Big Ten and going to the Rose Bowl. Iowa's Hayden Fry had a fearsome ground attack in Tavian Banks and Tim Dwight. The thing that uh, I think you have to start with is uh, stopping uh, Iowa's running attack. Easier said than done, even for the best defense in the nation. But two possessions later, Michigan answered. And Greasy drops to throw. He's got time. He fires to the goal line, and it is caught for a touchdown by Ty Streets. Seven all, late in the second quarter. The game could go either way. On third and 11, off the play fake, intercepted at the 45, the second in this first half for Marcus Ray. But the interception didn't help much. 
on the very next play, Michigan gave it back, setting up another Iowa touchdown. We're just trying to get out of the half now. But Michigan couldn't escape. We punt the ball to probably the most dangerous person in the Big Ten, Tim Dwight. Reverses field, gets a block. And leaves the other way, and he's got to go. Tim Dwight brings this one back as time elapses in the first half. Mercy, 61-yard return by Dwight. So now we're down 21-7. Michigan was, I think, shocked. Momentum is all in Iowa's favor. In Michigan's locker room at halftime, there were no great speeches. Coach Carr, he just asked them, what do you guys want to do with this season? How, how are you going to respond? And he just looked at them. And they, and they said, we're going to go out there and win. Dropping the throw, gets pressure, steps up in the pocket, fires in the end zone, touchdown, what's the throw? They came on the second half, and again, greasy. Nobody lost faith, nobody lost confidence. He drove them right down the field, and they scored. Two possessions later. Thomas, the freshman with the call up the right side, breaks loose, cuts to his left at the 50. Now it's a foot race down the left sideline. 30, 25, 20, he's bumped out of bounds. Inside the 10 by Eric Thigpen, the free safety. This is football. Heads down. Greasy will sneak it this time. Dives over the top. Touchdown, Michigan! Michigan tied it up at 21, but Iowa went ahead with a field goal late in the third quarter. Now they're down 24-21, and it looks like they're going to lose, and with seven minutes to go in the game, they get the ball with maybe their last shot. And the big play in that game, how things can turn, Michigan's got third and long from their own territory. They throw a pass to Ty Streets, it's not going to get the first down, and the Iowa guy interferes. So they get the flag, they get the first down, and if it's not for that play, Michigan might lose that game 24-21. Either way, Michigan stayed alive. Greasy calling the signals, turns, fakes to Thomas, rolls right, has a man in the end zone, touchdown, Jeremy Tubin! And the Wolverines have the lead for the first time, 27-24. Desperate. The Hawkeyes staged one last drive. Sherman will throw. Steele coming. He gets picked up late. On the run, the pass away. Intercepted by Sam Sword. Michigan will win the football game. Denied them. But go back and look at that interference call. Because if it's not for that flag and that call on that drive, who knows what might be. It might not be where we are right now. We have to win these kind of games because our conference is the best conference in the country and every team, any team can beat you on any given night. Michigan State, we're looking forward to playing them next week. Hey, this whole conference, Penn State, Minnesota, everything is great, but we got one step closer to our goal. I never lost, you know, confidence in what I was doing or myself, and I'm not the type of guy to uh, dwell on things that go wrong. Uh, we didn't lose uh, confidence as an offense either or as a team. While confidence may have conquered Iowa, Michigan knew it would take more than that to win next weekend. They're going to go into a hostile situation that they've never experienced this year so far. They were going into a civil war. This game right here, mm, biggest game of the year, probably the biggest game I've ever played in. It's going to be hard. Everybody's going to be talking a lot of noise. We don't do anything dirty. We don't lay hit. We don't cheap shots. There's going to be people, uh, you know, spitting in your eye. I mean, it's, it's dirty. And I was sitting in class, and, and all the students were coming up and say, hey, please be Michigan, please be Michigan. This year, the state championship was supposed to be the battle of the unbeatens. But a week before, Northwestern sank the Spartans, blocking a last-second field goal, which would have won the game. For Michigan State, it was a miscue. They were looking ahead. Fine. They're going to beat, everybody's saying, they're going to beat Michigan anyway. It's at, it's at East Lansing. ESPN's going to be there. This is a big game. State's biggest threat was running back Cedric Irvin, who gave Michigan first-half headaches with 143 yards and the game's first touchdown. On comes Chris Gardner. Nope. Fake Bill Burke. Wide open is Irvin. Touchdown. And they get a touchdown on a, on a fake field goal, and that was nice. But the response was incredible. The D, they take the ball, 95 yards. We find out that Michigan has a running back now. 
and his name is Chris Howard after that 10 yard pickup he comes around the left side breaks into the open out to the 30 35 has streets in front of the block out over midfield chase from behind greasy sneaks on first down at the one and dives in touchdown Michigan in the second half the Michigan defense absolutely dominated Woodson was incredible Schultz back to throw. He's being pressured by Hall. Scrambles out of there. Now has Fazell in his face. Throws. And Unbelievable. Made a spectacular interception. And somehow landed with a foot inbounds at the State 21. What a grab by Woodson. Probably the best play that I've ever seen as, as a football player or as a spectator. It added swagger to the defense. And the defense absolutely choked it out of them and they just wouldn't allow the running game of Michigan State to go and when the running game of Michigan State couldn't go they had to throw it intercepted at the 35 yard line by Woodson his second of the ball game led by a defense which reeled in six interceptions the Wolverines clobbered the Spartans 23 to 7 they was just in our way I know our hearts was in it but I don't know if our minds and, and, and everything else that was in it. Needed to be. We let them do all the talking and we did all the playing. We're looking to the end now. We're ready uh, for the last four games and nothing is going to stand in our way. The win over State suddenly put the maize in blue at number four in the nation. Now there were whispers of a Big Ten championship, even a national title. But nobody wanted to speak too soon. And who could blame them? Up next, Penn State on State's home turf, Happy Valley. Time to put up or shut up when we come back. Better than 100,000 will be on hand for homecoming as the undefeated fourth-ranked Michigan Wolverines play host to the Minnesota Golden Gophers. There was a lot riding on this game, not the least of which was the little brown jug. I took it upon myself to tell some of those players that you don't want to lose the jug. You do not want to lose the jug. That was the most important thing. The jug wasn't the only thing that had Michigan on guard. They had played Penn State to a one-point loss and Wisconsin to a one-point loss. Mm -hmm. So there was, they were, you know, they, they, they were not uh, being overlooked. The Michigan defense welcomed Minnesota with open arms. Sauter still got it, and Steele has him. Back near the 22. <laughs> Sam Sword. As Sam Sword and company swarm the Golden Gophers, Michigan's offense pulled a surprise attack. Greasy calling the signals, drops back, gives the ball to Howard on a reverse to Woodson going left. He's got a convoy in front of him. Hits down to the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Michigan! Coaches had been holding him back all season long. They took a chance and it, it play, paid off. With him doing his offensive skills and his defensive skills, that, that took them to the next level. You could just feel, was, you know, Minnesota's, I don't think we, you know, I don't know whether we can play with these guys. Fakes a toss to Howard. Good legs right. Tosses it to the tight end Campbell. He dives from the three into the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan. To play right side. Thomas burst through to the 20, to the sideline. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Michigan. 29 yards for Anthony Thomas. And the Wolverines have a 20-3 to three lead. Michigan would not celebrate for long. The hard part of the climb is in front of us. So we don't have time. You know, when you're on Everest and you're getting ready to go to the summit, there is no time for celebrating up there. There ain't anybody up there that's uh, partying. They're trying to stay alive and get up to the top. So I think we're in the same boat. You know, the, the script isn't finished yet. And we've got three more weeks that, uh, that we need to take care of. And... Uh, to finish that that dream story but of course you can count on charles woodson to throw a twist in the plot at that same press conference a prophetic proclamation I, yeah i do i do think i'm the best player in the country <laughs> i will hold back a boy yeah I, I feel i'm the best player in the country they were the words heard round the world and they echoed loudest in the hills of pennsylvania where many thought michigan would finally meet its match All right, down the penn state down the happy valley <laughs> The nation's watching. ABC, um, Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy. How, how else would you want it? Every seat sold at Beaver Stadium, but rain has softened the field. And handling the prolate steroid may be tricky. But bad weather or no, it's a big one in college football. Battle of the unbeaten, number four Michigan, coming to challenge number three, Penn State. This is 
Joe Paterno's boys were favored to win. Armed with running back Curtis Enos, they promised to go right at Charles Woodson. They wanted this game. This is the roadblock that stands in our way. The Big Ten Championship, the Rose Bowl, the National Championship. The winner had a shot at all three. I think we all understand what's at stake. Um, and I expect a great football game. We expect to win. That doesn't whet your appetite. You're watching the wrong channel. Michigan opened with a field goal before Jim Herman unleashed America's best defense. Instead of just running the ball at them with Curtis Enos, with their strength, they decide to run a reverse. And here's your first play. Pressure coming. Sack. It is Glenn Steele, number 81. And McQuarrie looking to pass. Pressure coming. Got him again. This time it is Joaquin Fazell. If you're looking for a defining moment in that game, Dadrian Taylor comes out of nowhere and just blasts this guy on a screen pass right in front of the Penn State bench. I mean, this is the biggest hit I've ever seen anywhere. He was like shot out of a cannon. Sounds cliche, but if you see the play, he was a projectile. Both of them were not cold. And the Penn State players and coaches were standing there right in front of them is where this hit happened. And they all looked and they went, holy cow, these guys mean business. And that set the tone for that entire game. Michigan's offense, meanwhile, was unstoppable. Here's the counter play. Thomas bursting outside to the right. He turns the corner at the five. Touchdown, Michigan! They offensively really came of age. The last time Brian Greasy ran that far, his dad was chasing him with a stick. With the oxygen. One minute later, Greasy found number two. Greasy to throw. Woodson wide open in the middle. He hits him on a post at the 20. See you later. Charles Woodson, 37 yards. Touchdown, Michigan. Another touchdown pass gave Michigan a 24-0 lead as the teams went to the locker room. Curtis Enos, the feared running back, had only 37 yards. The first half of that game was as perfect a first half of football as a team could play. Joe Paterno could not get his crew back on track in the second half. They managed only eight points, while Michigan piled on with two sacks, an interception, and another touchdown. That was as good a football game as I've ever seen Michigan play. An official even came over to Lloyd with about two minutes to go. The game was over and said, Lloyd, I've been refereeing in this league 15 years, and I have never seen a performance like this. I think that we come out and we play the best, probably the best game we've ever played. I just told you how tough we are. We came out and played a great game today against the number two team in the land and just put them in the dirt today. That was our goal today. We had to come here and make a statement, earn the respect of everybody in the nation. After the crushing defeat over Penn State, the Associated Press officially crowned Michigan number one. Now they were the guys to beat. But if there was one team out there that could knock them off, it was that crew from Columbus. And guess what? They were talking trash. When we come back, it's time for Ohio State. Of course that you're number one. You know you got to play each week because it's uh, when you're number one, there's more people out there trying to take you down. Well, it's hard not to get excited, you know. I mean, just, you know, you just can't think about it. You know, you got to go in just like, you know, we came in the beginning of the year where no one gave us no chance. And now, you know, now that we're uh, number one in the nation, you know, we just got to keep the same focus. Stay focused, keep warm. That was Michigan's mantra in frigid Madison, Wisconsin. Michigan traditionally doesn't do well up in, the, up in that, uh, what do you call, uh, badger trap. It's probably the most hostile uh, environment uh, we have in the Big Ten. The last time Michigan had gone to Wisconsin ranked number one, they were beaten by Wisconsin in Camp Randall back in 81 or something. So there's some history that people are calling on and saying this, and I think Lloyd told all the kids that. Wisconsin was Michigan's last hurdle before Ohio State, and here the Wolverines could grab a share of the conference title. Now, they don't vote you the Big Ten championship. You have to go earn it. And the Badgers were still in the hunt. For Wisconsin, if they win... Uh the last two games, they go to the Rose Bowl. They were going against probably the biggest offensive line in the history of college football in Wisconsin, and Wisconsin's defense, a very scrappy defense. So I think they're beatable. You know, it's just a matter of how well we play and how well they play. Well, when you come into Camp Randall Stadium to play a game, you better double clutch your chin strap because you're going to be in a smash mouth game. The Badger defense came ready to play. 
but Lloyd Carr had a few tricks up his sleeve. Charles Woodson comes into the ball game. He's in there as a wideout. That will get Wisconsin's attention. Here's a lateral to Woodson. He's going to throw the old transcontinental to Greasy. Right side at the 25, the 20, 15, 10, and he's run out of bounds inside the five down at the one-yard line. Ooh. How do you like that? Yeah, Michigan showed you a little razzle-dazzle stuff. More things that Charles Woodson can do. That thump you just heard, that was Bo Schembechler fainting. <laughs> As Michigan fans picked themselves up off the floor, Chris Howard took the handoff. Right side, touchdown Michigan on fourth down. Chris Howard picked his way off the right side, did not run into the pile, found daylight and got into the end zone, and the Wolverines take the lead, six to nothing on the opening drive of the game. Michigan was relentless. Greasy rolling right to throw. He's got all kinds of room. He's going to go deep for tie streets, open at the goal line, touchdown Michigan! Ty Streets makes the grab for the score from 37 yards out, and the Wolverines have a 13 to nothing lead. Wisconsin needed to regroup, and in the second half, they did. In the third quarter, the Badgers came out strong, flying 80 yards downfield in just 11 plays. Wisconsin was able to get the ball out on some options and score and keep it close. They give it to him. Touchdown. He disappeared in the pile, and when they uncovered him, there he was. Touchdown, Wisconsin. But the Wolverines kept the Badgers at bay. Michigan players were tempered in their celebration of the 26-16 victory. Our first goal was to win the Big Ten Championship. We did that. We want to share the Big Ten Championship. But, uh, you know, we didn't say in our goals that we wanted to win a share of the Big Ten Championship. We said we want to win the Big Ten Championship. And so our goals have not been satisfied yet, and uh, we have one more week to go. Those are the Ohio State Buckeyes knocking on the front door. And they come in with a world of incentive. For the Buckeyes, a win meant a trip to Pasadena and a possible shot at being national champs. They get to come into the Michigan, the big house, and get a chance to knock Michigan off of its pedestal. Oh, God. I, I, w I wanted to play. You know, you're talking about total rever reversal of fortunes here. Ohio State has a chance to do something that Michigan's done to them for the past two years. For the past two years, Michigan had beaten the Buckeyes, ruining their hopes for a national title. Hail to the victors, Williams! Hail to the conquering heroes! Hail, hail to Michigan, the leaders in This year, with fans rabid as ever, the teams were battling long before the game began. The war started with David Boston taking aim at Charles Woodson, taking on the entire Michigan team. I think if our, our uh, offensive defense are clicking, we should beat them by two or three touchdowns. Well, I mean, that's a strong statement, but I think if our offensive defense clicks, then we should win by two touchdowns. <laughs> he comes on ESPN and USA Today, talking about he's the best college player, da-da-da-da-da, you know what I'm saying? I don't... I'm just about to sit and watch film on him and see what's up. I mean, he ain't, he ain't no Sean Spring. If those guys want to talk, you know, let them talk. But the game is going to be played on the field, and um, you can do all the talking you want. We're going up there, we're going to do the same thing they, uh, they did to us last year. He said my name, so, I mean, it was like a personal challenge. I mean, if you're going to say somebody's name, then that, that person has to take it personally. And, and I did uh, two years ago, and uh, I, I guess uh, Boston mentioned my name. So, I mean, I take it personal, and uh, like I say, I'll see him on Saturday. Here are the Michigan Wolverines. They're undefeated. They're 10 and 0, ranked first in the AP poll, second in the coaches poll. The last time Michigan was voted a national football championship was 1948. It was showtime, and Woodson wasted no time silencing Ohio State. Sets to throw, has time, now steps up and fires. Woodson's got it on a crossing route. 35, 30, hit from behind by Winfield. Inside the 20 and hauled down at the 16-yard line. 37 yards to Charles Woodson on the crossing route. First down Michigan on the Ohio State 16-yard line. With Woodson's catch, the Wolverines were knocking. Greasy gets the snap, turns, gives to the A-train, touchdown! 
Touchdown, Michigan! Anthony Thomas, the freshman, holds in from one yard out. His fifth rushing touchdown of the year. And Michigan has taken the lead 6 to nothing. With 6.22... On their next possession, the Buckeyes were stopped dead in their tracks by Michigan's defense and had to punt away. Woodson back, back, grabs this one on his 23. Races to his left, to the 25, splits two men. Now to his left at the 40, 45, and there he goes. Charles Woodson down the sideline. He's got to go all the way. Touchdown, Michigan. Saves of Desmond Howard. You could just feel this kid who had the Heisman on the line, possibly. He didn't know it at the time but who had been called out by the other guys. He was in a big game, and he was stepping up to the plate, and he was making contact. The real backbreaker is, is his interception in the second half, and he, he intercepts the ball. That right there won Charles Woodson the Heisman Trophy. Polish off the Heisman! Make room on the mantle! Charles Woodson took it away! An end zone interception! Ohio State was on the ropes. But then the Buckeyes got a second wind. Going big. Yeah, he's got one. Oh, my goodness. He turns around and taunts Charles Woodson. After Boston's brash touchdown, Michigan began to stumble. And the ball is loose. It is picked up by the Buckeyes, and it is down at about the two-yard line. The turnover turned into a touchdown and it was suddenly 20 to 14. But Ohio State could not overcome Michigan's defense, which denied the Buckeyes' last minute bid. The Wolverines were Big Ten champs. They were going to Pasadena. You got the rose in your hand already? Yeah, I stole it, but we're going, baby. Big David Boston said some things he should not have said, obviously. Who was that? Boston Who's coming that? into the... <laughs> oh, number nine? Oh, he, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. Hey, this was all about Big Ten. This was all about, I mean, just winning, having a good time, playing as a team, playing together, playing focused, and just, just bringing it all in when it has to be done. I know I've been waiting on it since I came to the University of Michigan. I figured when I came here that I would have already been at least one. But, hey, it couldn't have come at a better time. We finally going. It's the most incredible thing that's ever happened in my entire life. Really? <laughs> I got to get out of here. <laughs> You don't think about the national championship? No, no. Why not? I think about Rose Bowl championship. That's what my goal was. That's what's important to me. The final episode in this dream season begins in just a few hours. Think about it. A national title on the line in Pasadena. Of course, you can see the entire game right here on Channel 7. And don't forget, up next, we have the Rose Bowl parade for you. Special thanks to our good friends Jim Brandstatter and Jamie Morris. We thought we'd leave you today with a little Frank and a lot of Charles as we tip our hat to a man who this season definitely did it his way.